Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, some analysis that we did at Milliman. Um, you know, the, the results of the analysis are based on you know the information we were given, and you know we took an independent look at things. And uh, you know, these are the findings we had based on the data we had. So um, just yeah, yeah. You want to read it all? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so to start with, uh, we'll go uh, into a little bit of the background of Ashura. So you know, as we all know, we've had the conversations today. You know, prescription drug prices are uh, uh, have trended, you know, very high trends in the past, and uh, and payers have have looked for ways to control those costs to make them more predictable, uh, to uh, you know, to uh, to kind of get a better idea of of where they're going to be. Uh, so Abarca created this, this uh, uh, product, Asura, to, to help with that. And, and their hope was that, that they could add transparency, add predictability, uh, and, and that it would be straightforward so, so that the payers would know what their drug costs were going to be. So to test it out, they, they contracted with one health plan for, for 2021 to 2023, said, hey, let's see if this works. Um, they found someone that was willing you know, to try it out. And then after uh, about a year of it, uh, or a half a year of it, they, they came to Milliman and they said, hey, you know, we think this works. Can you take a look to help us know whether the methodology is good, whether it's appropriate, you know, uh, you know, and, and also help the plan that, that contracted with them know whether it was appropriate. So that's what we did. Uh, so how's the Assure model work? Uh, so... Essentially, the Assure model guarantees a net cost per script uh, for the term of the contract. So, um, you know, uh, essentially what it does is it shifts all of the risk of, of inflation and drug mix onto a barca. And we had that question at, the, at part of the last session before we came here, um, you know, should PBMs be taking on risk? And, you know, I, I guess this is the test case for whether or not that you know, that will work going forward. So as part of it, uh, they, they pass all, all the discounts are passed through at the point of sale. Uh, and uh, the only exclusions are, are specialty drugs that were not on the formulary on the prior year and also had no utilization. So the intent was to try to exclude as little as possible. I think Jason talked earlier about, you know, trying to uh, exclude, you know, as few things as possible, deny as few claims as possible. Um, and so that's, that's the attempt at that. Uh, finally, a, a Barker retains the rebates. However, uh, the, the net cost per script is, is negotiated at the level that, that the rebates are expected to come in at. So uh, a Barker is taking a little bit of risk on the rebates there too, but the, uh, they use the rebate dollars that come in to pay the reconciliation payment. So you know, at the end of the day, the plan should be uh, indifferent to, to those rebates. So the first thing we obviously had to do, Barca sends us all this data, um, all you know, the contracts, so we have to validate it. So we, we went in detail, we looked at, uh, uh, at the data we had, we processed the claims, we, we um, then compared it to, to their data uh, that, that a Barca had uh, calculated in the, in the reconciliation payments. Um, we came to... Uh, a fairly close, you can see it's, it's within, within thousands of dollars. So, this, is, this may be the best uh, reconciliation I've ever seen. I mean, that might be the closest I've ever gotten. Uh, it's not even at two decimals, there's nothing. <clears throat> so, you know, so we, we were comfortable there. The claims, the claims that Abarca said came through are the claims that we said came through. So our starting point, uh, our starting point is okay. The next step was to actually run through the methodology. And I, I clicked the clicker twice here, so let me wait a second to see. That uh, didn't. By the way, the screen isn't working, and it's supposed to be up here. So I apologize for looking back behind me. Uh, but uh, in order to do our analysis, so our, our methodology, and, and it's fairly straightforward, as you can see, it's, it's straightforward. So, you know, we process their claims, we, we reconcile that the claims that we have are the claims that Abarca had, the claims that the health plan um, knew about. We're good there, that's, I said. 
So uh, the, the only slight complexity to processing the claims uh, in order to, to account for, you know, the, the net cost per script is just one number, right? And so for extended day scripts, those need to be converted, you know, when people are filling mail order, 90 day mail order scripts. So we applied the logic there to, to uh, uh, adjust those scripts for, you know, for example, a, a 60 day script would be, would be two claims. Um, after that, we applied the specialty exclusions. You know, like I mentioned, the, the specialty drugs uh, are only excluded if they are, were not on formulary in the prior year and also had no utilization. Then we calculated our own independent calculation of what the methodology shows, what the health plan should have paid, what, uh, what reconciliation payment Abarca should have made to that plan, or you know, vice versa. And then finally, we compared it to, to, the, to the actual amounts. All right, so what were the results? And there's going to be numbers up on the screen here. You don't have to look at the actual numbers. These have been blinded a little bit um, you know, so that we weren't putting the health plan's exact data out there. But, but as you can see, um, you know, the, the, the final number down here doesn't quite tie as close as the reconciliation payment, but we got very close to where uh, Abarco uh, had calculated the reconciliation. It was, um, so, in the end, what we found was that Abarca was uh, processing the methodology as they intended to, what they promised the, the health plan. So, uh, the, the one uh, item that was not included was, there's, we mentioned the specialty exclusion, there's one claim that they excluded. Um, so, when we talk about trying to not exclude claims, there's one claim that was excluded. And that, that specialty list was not ready at the time. Uh, so when, when we have that small difference in the, in the numbers that you saw, that's part of where that came from. The other part of where it came from is, you know, they did the reconciliation back in June or July. You know, we're getting data now six months later. There's some, some differences in the timing of the data. So all in all, we found that Abarca was applying the methodology like they said they would. The, the, the contract uh, uh, to, the, uh, to the plan, uh, they were, they were uh, abiding by everything that they had to. The deal was, um, was as they laid it out. Uh, additionally, you know, I mentioned earlier what Abarca's hope was, was that, uh, that this, this deal would add predictability, uh, transparency, and that it would be straightforward to the plan. And so, you know, when, when we think about that, um, you know, transparency, well, the, the discounts are passed through entirely at the point of sale. And so that gave them a, a, an added level of transparency there. Predictability, the drugs, uh, the, the net cost per script is what it's contracted to be, right? So uh, by, its, by its nature, and since Abarca was uh, uh, applying it correctly, it added in, an incredible amount of predictability. And then finally, as, as you saw in maybe our methodology, it's a fairly straightforward methodology, and you know, it's, it's easy for the client to understand, it's either for the plan to understand, it was easy for us to understand, you know, and, and so it adds a, a level of, of straightforwardness in the, in the application of it.